I'm at a canyon. A canyon is a big gouge in the earth that's been carved out by a river. Now when I say a canyon is carved out by a river, let me show you what I mean. Here I've got a canyon in a box, and the sand represents rock, and this water represents, well, water. So when this river is running through the canyon, it's breaking up the rock into little tiny pieces, and at the same time, it's also flushing it out of the canyon. So it breaks the rock and then removes it, and that's how you get a deep gouge in the earth. Here, let me show you on the canyon in a box. So there it goes. We have water acting as an erosive force. And it's picking up little particles of sand and it's flushing them out. And it's starting to form the canyon. The canyon's starting to take the path of least resistance. You can see the trickle of water. It's going. It's going. It's going. Well, kind of stopped. And this process will take a few million years. And it's going. Come on, little water. Go. Do your thing. Erode. Hey, kablammo. There we go. You can see it's broken through now. You can watch as the canyon walls are getting deeper and deeper. And you see the stream of water coming out. It's flushing out a lot of sand with it. And the sand is piling up at the end of the canyon. That's exactly how a real canyon forms. The water flows and it breaks the rock apart and it carries the rock out of the canyon and it makes that little ditch. Ah, it's a beautiful thing. And if we keep pouring more and more rainwater through the canyon, it gets deeper and wider. Let's take a look at exactly just how it can get deeper and wider. There are a lot of different ways. So here we have a stream bed that's flowing along this wall of the canyon and it's cutting away at the rock right here and it leaves this rock overhanging. Eventually, this rock is just gonna all crumble. There it goes. It's just gonna crumble away and come tumbling down. And that's the way that water can make this canyon wider as well as deeper. Just like this. This rock used to be attached to this rock up here, but it got undercut and it fell. Cool. Sometimes it gets really windy in the canyon. And when it gets windy, it picks up sand. The sand flies against the wall of the canyon, and once it's flown against the wall of the canyon, it chips off little teeny tiny pieces. That's another way that erosion happens and the canyon gets bigger. There it is! Broken at work! Woo! Isn't that great? The canyon just keeps getting deeper the whole time I'm here! Ah, check out that river. That's erosion in action. Now, not only does the water serve to break up the rock into little tiny pieces, it also carries the rock out of the canyon. See, when rock's in little teeny tiny pieces, it's called sand or silt. And that gets mixed up in the water and the water carries it out where it eventually flows all the way to the ocean. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. See this bag of water? I just pulled it out of the river. You see it's really cloudy. That's what you're seeing is all the sand and the silt, all the little tiny pieces of rock. They're kind of floating around in the water. Now let's wait a second and see what happens. Look, it's a little bit clearer, and you can see there's some stuff that settled out on the bottom. Look, it's been about 20 hours since I collected this water, and you can see a lot of little tiny particles have settled to the bottom and it still hasn't totally settled out because there is so much material in this water. Now if there's this much material in this little bag full of water, imagine how much material is being moved around by that huge river. I mean, erosion is not a fast process, but it is just mind-blowingly big. It's just amazing how much material that river is moving constantly, tons and tons of sand and silt that will all eventually end up in the ocean. It's just so much movement of material. It's amazing. Erosion is hugely powerful. Well, that's how canyons form. And don't forget, we post a new video at artsciencefun.com every week, so be sure to check back.